Go ask Alice. Page 109. Who the hell cares? At last, the goddamn rain has stopped. The sky is as blue as it was ever meant to be, which I gather is unusual for this area. Doris and I are both going to cut out of this asinine assed place. There's going to be a rally in Southern California. Wow, here we come. I'm actually literally and completely sick to my stomach. I want to puke all over the shitty world. Most of the way down, we rode with a big, fat-assed, baby-screwing truck driver who picked us up and got his kicks by physically hurting Doris and watching her cry. When he stopped for gas, we both sneaked out, even though he had threatened us. Man, what a mother. We finally got another ride with some of our kind, and while they shared their grass with us, it must have been some homegrown stuff because it was so fucking weak, it could barely get us off terra firm. The rally itself was great. Acid and booze and pot as free as the air. Even now, colors are still dripping down over me, and the crack in the window is beautiful. This life is beautiful. It's so goddamn beautiful I can hardly stand it. And I'm a glorious part of it. Everybody else is just taking up space. Goddamn stupid people. I like to shove life down all their throats and then maybe they'd understand what it's all about. Near the door, a fat girl with long stringy blonde hair is getting to her knees on a green upon green upon purple robe. She's got a guy with her and he has a ring in his nose and multicolored designs on his shaven head. They keep saying love to each other. It's beautiful to watch. Color intermingled with color, people intermingled with people, color and people intercoursing together. I don't know what or when or where or who it is. I only know that I am now a priestess of Satan trying to maintain after a freak out to test how free everybody was and to take our vows. Dear Diary, I feel awfully bitched and pissed off at everybody. I'm really confused. I've been the digger here and now when I... Face a girl, it's like facing a boy. I get all excited and turned on. I want to screw with the girl, you know, and then I get all tensed up and scared. I feel goddamn good in a way and goddamn bad in a way. I want to get married and have a family, but I'm afraid. I'd rather be liked by a guy than a girl. I'd rather screw with a guy, but I can't. I guess I've had a bit of a bummer. Sometimes I want one of the girls to kiss me. I want her to touch me, to have her sleep under me, but then I feel terrible. I feel I get guilty and it makes me sick. Then I think of my mother. I think of screaming at her and telling her to make room for me because I'm coming home and I feel like a man. Then I get sick and I just want anybody and I should be out doing my digging. I'm really sick. I'm really way out of it. Dear diary, it's a thousand light years later, lunar time. Everybody's been storytelling except me. I don't have any stories worth telling. All I can do is draw pictures of monsters and internal organs and hate. Another day, another blowjob. The fuzz is clamped down till the town is mother dry. If I don't give big ass and blow, he'll cut off my supply. Hell, I'm shaken on the inside more than I'm shaken on the outside. What a bastard world without drugs. The dirty Ofei who wants me to lay it on him knows my ass is dragging. But he's doling out the only supply I know about. I'm almost ready to take on the fat cats, the rich Philistines, or even the whole public for one good shot. Goddamn big ass makes me do it before he gives me the load. Everybody is just lying around here like they're dead and little Jakin is yelling, Mama, Daddy can't come now. He's humping Carla. I've got to get out of this shithole. I don't know what the hell hour or day or even year it is or even what town. I guess I've had a blackout or they've been passing some bad pills. The girl on the grass beside me is white faced and Mona Lisa like and she's preggers. I asked her what she's going to do with the baby and she just said it will belong to everybody. We'll all share her. I wanted to go and find somebody who's holding but the baby thing really bugged me. So I asked her for an upper and she shook her head like a stupid blank, and I realized that she's completely burned out. Behind that beautiful stone face is a big, dried-up bunch of ashes, and she's lying there like a stupid dumb shit who can't do anything. Well, at least I'm not burned out and I'm not preg. 
or maybe I am. I couldn't take the goddamn pill even if I had it. No doper can take the pill because they don't know what the hell day it is. So maybe I am pregnant. So what? There's a pre-med dropout wandering around somewhere who will take care of it. Or maybe some goddamn prick would stomp on me during a freak out and I'd lose it anyway. Or maybe the son of a bitch bomb will go off tomorrow. Who knows? When I look around here at all the ass draggers, I really think that we are a bunch of gutless wonders. We get pissed off when someone tells us what to do, but when we don't know what to, what to do unless some fat bastard tells us. Let somebody else think for us and do for us and act for us. Let them build the roads and the cars and the houses, run the lights and the gas and the water and the sewers. We'll just sit here on our blistered tails with our minds exploding and our hands out. God, I sound like a goddamn establishmentarian. And I haven't even got a pill to take the taste out of my mouth or the, or drive the bullshit thoughts away. When? A raindrop just splashed on my forehead and it was like a tear from heaven. Are the clouds and the skies really weeping over me? Am I really alone in the whole wide gray world? Is it possible that even God is crying for me? Oh, no, no, no. I'm losing my mind. Please, God, help me. I gather from the sky that it is early morning. I've been reading a paper that the wind blew up beside me. It says one girl had her baby in the park, another had a miscarriage, and two unidentified boys died during the night from ODs. Oh, how I wish one of them had been me. Another day. I finally talked to an old priest who really understands young people. We had an endlessly long talk about why young people leave home. Then he called my mom and dad. While I waited for him to get the call through, I looked at myself in the mirror. I can't believe that I have changed so little. I expected to look old and hollow and gray, but I guess it's only me on the inside that has shriveled and deteriorated. Mom answered the phone in the family room and dad ran upstairs to get the extension and the three of us almost drowned out the connection. I can't understand how they can possibly still love me and still want me, but they do, they do, they do. They were glad to hear from me and to know I am all right. And there were no recriminations or scoldings or lectures or anything. It's strange that when something happens to me, dad always leaves everything in the whole world and comes. I think it, I think if he were a peace mission involving all humanity and all the galaxies, he would leave to come to me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He truly does. I just wish I could love myself. I don't know how I can treat my family like I have, but I'm going to make it all up to them. I'm through with all the shit. I'm not even going to talk about, I'm not even going to talk about it or write about it or even think about it anymore. I'm going to spend the rest of my entire life trying to please them. <laughs>